Here, here. I want you guys to know something. I love this business. It's what I do. It's my passion. I have uh, done construction. You know, I started off as an accountant. I, I, you guys ever watch any of those Gordon Gecko movies? Right? You ever watch any like Boiler Room or any of that kind of stuff? Can I, have you seen any of those? Have you seen any of the crazy ones where they're like doing crazy stuff? I was going to do that at first. I ran out of high school. I worked in like this boiler room, calling people, begging for money. I was working for this penny stock firm. I thought I was living in Florida. I thought I was going to make a million bucks. And all my friends, you know, were wearing, you know, uh, expensive suits and have real cars. I'm like, oh, that's that seemed fun. And uh, I did that for a while. And then the stock market crashed. And I lost all my family's money. I, I lost like friends' money, right? I didn't talk my mom into buying stocks for me. And, and like, yeah, this is not what I want to do. It was like, it was not something I want to do. And I went back to school, and uh, during school, I worked my way through college painting houses, right? Like, I lived in Florida, and I had a little pressure cleaning machine, right? You guys know what a pressure cleaning machine is? Right, little ones that clean sidewalks and crap, right? So I'd, I'd walk around cleaning sidewalks and uh, and people's roofs. And up there, they have sh uh, shingle tile roofs, and I'd, I'd clean those. And then I'd peel all the paint off, and I'd go, hey, I'd, can I paint your roof? And they're like, yeah, yeah. And I'd, I'd go, here, it's 500 bucks plus the material. I'm like, I'd make 500 bucks for a day. And that was huge, right? Come on, I had to be a college kid back, this is back in, you know, early 80s. And I'll make, I'll make 500 bucks in a day. And then I'd start talking to my friends, and I'm like, I'll go get the jobs. I'd go door to door, and I had this cute little outfit and this cool little brochure I made up. And I started my first business, right? That was when I first started doing it. And, uh, and then I started organizing, and then I figured out how to paint roofs, and then from there I figured out how to paint houses and how to do them in a day, right? I got really smart. You know, you know the, 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 the things with paper and tape on them? You guys know what I'm talking about? You ever see the, like, the, the paper rolls, I got paper? I figured out how to, how to tape off the entire house. I, we would tape off the doorknobs and the handles and the windows, so then we could go away with an airless sprayer, and we could spray the whole thing, and one group would spray, and one group would roll, and then if, you caught, if, 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 the, if we used to play games, if you could get back around, if the sprayer could get all around the house, get to do two coats, if they could get back around and spray the rollers, they were allowed to spray them, right? So imagine, imagine that game, right? You're your kids, and you're like, and there would be this race. And then if it was, you know, so it was fun. We kind of made fun out of a system. And I can just tell you from that time alone, look, it's where you guys are at now. There's nothing you can't do. At, at, at this age where you guys are at, you have no bills, no responsibilities. Even the ones you think you have, you, you don't. They're, they're all made up. I promise you're at this point in life where there's, you can do anything you want. You can make up any business you want. And today, the most fascinating part about what's happening, I, you know, I, I run a podcast. And uh, I would, today I had the, do you guys know what Procore is? How many of you guys have ever worked with software, construction software? Uh, we've used, we've used a little bit of like uh, project management software like uh, Microsoft Project things like that. So, so Procore nice. Procore is a a a, a, a software that uh, lots of construction companies use. It takes the um, uh, accounting side of it. They have a really big heavy accounting side, so you can do all your invoicing, all your change orders, all of your uh, all your billing stuff, and you can do all that in Procore. And they got this. Uh, data, data analytics uh, model that really is collecting data all the time. Your employees, amount of hours they work. Look, if everything you look at right now in the world, it's changing fast. You know, you know, for for most of the last couple thousand years, from the time they were building Colosseum, right? Like, think of it. When they were building Colosseum, what did they do? They took big, heavy objects, they carried them over a place, and they pounded on them. Right? And then some guy looked at it, well, that's kind of right, move that over like this. That was the architect, right? So, you know, the guy thought he knew what he was doing, right? He moved that over, move that over, right? And then guys would pound on it some more, and then that was construction. Well, look, it's not much different today. I mean, if you look at what we do today, it's some fancier tools that pound on it, but, you know, and there's some fancier architects that tell you what to do, but it's not, it's changing, right? What's happening now is since um, BIM technologies come into place, uh, 3D cameras, the stuff the technology is bringing to it, the curve for construction is happening way faster. You know, uh, uh, Chris Scott and I were talking about, you know, if this is construction, right, a, a building, right here, actually, imagine the building you're in. Uh, look, if this is a building, lifespan of a building, wherever your house is, the place that you're at right now, look, let's say that's a 150-year-old building, right? From the time you build the building, from the time you build it, the time it falls apart, right? Let's say that's it. 
right? The, the building that you're at, Audrey, that building that's behind you, let's say that's going to make it 150 years, right? Construction is the part that touches my finger. You see that right there? So people put up with a lot of BS from construction people, right? Because they had to deal with this for long, right? So you're a little bit behind, so you show up a little bit late, so Bob doesn't do this thing. Ah, you know, I said I'll turn over in May, but I make it in June. People put up with that stuff, right? They got away with it. Construct contractors got away with it. It was kind of like, ah, it's construction. Don't worry. Look, you can't expect those construction guys to meet a schedule, right? The construction guys, right? Well, that's not true anymore. Today, with the Internet of Things, it's changing so much faster. You know, uh, uh, the technology by which we're going to grow is going to change so fast that you guys are now at the space where that curve is happening, right? The expectation for construction, you, you know, uh, we build chains, we build brands, we build brands like McDonald's and Starbucks and Hertz and Chipotle's, and we build them very fast. We're, we're probably the fastest construction people you've ever met. Now, one, you can tell, I kind of run a little quick. You guys get that? I'm not really a sleepy guy. Now, part of that is because I get excited about the business that we run. And then I look at it and go, all right, how do we bring a different way of looking at this than the redneck fathers that I started with, right? The people showed up on my job sites like cowboys. Well, y'all, we'll figure out how to get this done whenever we can. Right, I'll do the best I can. You bring your horse over here, and I'll, right? That doesn't work anymore. Now, look, you can be from the South and still be smart. Uh, I prove that. Uh, and there's today we can bring technology to it and look at projects way smarter than ever before. So no matter where you are in your, uh, your development, construction, this lagging industry has given us all kinds of opportunity for you to do impact, right? So today, if you want to be in construction, there is a million places for you to go, right? It doesn't have to be in the field, right? It doesn't have to be holding a tool. It can be anywhere along the spectrum from the, from the way that we look at data analytics of a building, right? Today, we were dealing with, um, I, had a, I had a podcast this morning, and the podcast we went through uh, with Procor, and we were talking about uh, how, how we're looking at sites way different than before, right? Here, imagine this. Imagine Chipotle's, they want to put a site out in, uh, let's say here in Chicago, Illinois, right? We want to go out to Oak Park, where I, where I live. And they say, I want to put a site out there. Today, the technology that's coming into place, as right now it's mostly siloed, right? We've got Alexa, we've got Watson, we've got Cortana, we've got uh, all these different technologies grabbing, you know, Google grabbing all, these, all this data. But mostly they're still siloed. But as those start to come together, right, Chipotle can start looking at the data of a neighborhood, right? Ima imagine them looking at uh, Oak Park and saying, all right, where are all my burrito eating people? Hey, you guys look like burrito eating people. You guys eat burritos, right? Right now, look. You guys like burrito? Tyler like burritos? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm born and raised San Diego, and I'm back home right now, so that's I live on that stuff. You oh, know? Right, right, right. <laughs> right. So wherever Tyler's are at, I the database will go. Well, look, there's all the Tyler's over here. They're over in the corner. They're the Gaslight District over where we're at in San Diego. I'm in like La Jolla. Dude, no way, dude. I love La Jolla. <laughs> Let me tell you something, I built that chart house up in the hill. Have you been to chart house up there on the hill? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, I built that chart house. Now, right, that chart house, right? Uh, Tory Drive, Tory, Tory Drive, right? Tory, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 here. Let me tell you, I built that, right? And that's how old I am, right? Isn't that funny? Right, you, you, you guys wanna talk about where Mecca is? Where Tyler lives may be my favorite place on the planet. I, I, I'm just telling you, I've been a lot, of, I traveled this entire country, and you sit on the bluff of that hill right there, and you look out over those waves, you may know what God has done. I don't know how whatever your belief is, but that is probably the most serene, beautiful place. That little cool breeze comes up, right? And those people eat good and they live good. It's a, it's a great, all right, listen, I, I got off a tangent, right? Let's go back. So imagine now Chipotle looks at a property and says, where is Tyler? Where are all the people that have those characteristics? All right, they're over here in this corner of La Jolla. We're gonna find a way to put a burrito shop in front of them, right? So now they know where Tyler is when he goes to school, when he goes to, when he goes to soccer, when he goes to work, right? And now th with technology, they can look at the drivers and figure out how do I get my store in front of Tyler? So today we can look at the demographic modeling about where we place locations way smarter than ever before, 
Are we on the going to work side? Are we on the coming home side? Are we next to schools and hospitals and offices so we can do catered lunches? So all of the things that make brand identity to figure out where we want to put projects now can come into play, right? Now I can look at how I do that. Now imagine this. Remember the first time you went to Chipotle, Tyler? What's the first thing that happened when you went there? Remember the first time? To, to where, Chipotle? No, you remember the first time? I think so, yeah. <laughs> tell, tell me about the first time. Um, I think I was overwhelmed by how many different options I was able to choose. You know, I'm, I was used to just like simple options. I wasn't, I wasn't used to the subway fashion of being able to build your own burrito. I think when I first went there. Right, right, right. So, so here, so you walked in and it's, first of all, the construction is kind of funny, right? You got keyless fixtures, you got plywood, you got metal. It's like these kind of things you find at Home Depot, but it looks freaking cool, right? You're like, I can do that in my, my dorm. I can do that in my house. You're like, it's all this simple stuff done pretty good. It's like their food. They got simple products, right? If you go in, you got a burrito or a bowl, right? Then you go to your proteins, right? Then now they've added a few proteins, but oh no, the rice. You go your rice first, brown rice, white rice, right? Right now they've added cauliflower. Have you guys had the cauliflower yet? Freaking boss, love it. Um, now you go over to uh, the proteins, right? And then from there you put your t you put your vegetables on there, right? Your toppings, right? Very simple product, but you had to have that experience. You and the counter person had an interaction. You had good foods in a place that was simply built, but it was kind of cool, good foods that were simply built, but it was kind of cool, right? And you went down the line and you had an experience. But today, if you call, who do you guys call when you want food? You don't go anywhere anymore. Who do you call? You guys call Uber Eats, right? I'm not going anywhere, that food's coming to me, right? That wasn't there when I was a kid. You guys, food, come to me, right? I'm not going anywhere, so now, it doesn't matter if Chipotle has a, has a store on, on, in the middle of La Jolla, which the rent, have you ever been to La Jolla? The freaking rent in La Jolla is crazy. Now if it's down the block in the warehouse district and that Uber Eats driver goes to that location, now it's got a whole different way of looking at picking sites. So, so Chipotle's not gonna pick, do I wanna be where the Tylers are to get their first experience? Or do I wanna serve the third party? Is this a market that has third party deliveries? So now I can look at the modeling and pick what I want to do with it, right? Now I have the option of getting smarter about how I pick a location, right? And, and that you're seeing this, you know, when cars were built, right? You imagine, imagine being the guy on a horse, you know, I got there on a horse and buggy, and you're like, damn it, what that thing is? I'm gonna kill people, right? They're all freaked out by technology. But you could never imagine, you would never imagine that later in life you could hit this little box and a car would come to you. Like, oh, black magic back then, right? Like, holy, today, what's happening with technology, where you guys get the benefit, is that there's, creation is happening so much faster. The playing field has changed. You guys now have something I didn't have. I had to carry files and folders and stuff around. Same with Scott. We had to carry, the, the, the point of entry was so expensive to do things, it was painful. Today, two kids on a laptop can start a construction company and compete with me right down the street. Now, you have to go through some brain damage and learn a couple things, and that's the joy that I get to have as an old timer. I have some experience, but you'll have yours because you don't have a lot of bills. Your time takes, you have, you have the ability to sit and try any, right now, there is nothing you can't do, right? And I mean that, I mean that, try, take the swings for it, right? If you have an idea, go for it. Look, whatever that is, idea that you've been thinking about, you've been penciling, go for it. Look, literally, that's how it happens. It goes from your idea, to trying it. And all I can tell you is at 52 years old, I've had lots of ideas. I run, I run nine different companies, right? I have, I have between CDO Group and CDO Services. One's a consulting company that does construction management. All we do is we, they hire our construction managers to go manage their construction, right? Brands like Chipotle's and uh, uh, we have fitness brands, we have uh, automotive brands, we have all kinds. And then we have general contracting side. And then I, I have things, I have like real estate portfolios I have a production company. I, I did a TV show around the world. I took my family around the world. It's called Family Style coming out on TV, right? It's a lot of fun, right? So every time I've had an idea, I've stepped into it and tried on, I tried it on. Now look, the best thing you get to know is if you try something and fail, you won't know until you try. And the faster you try, the faster you fail, and the faster you learn. And you just make a little bit of adjustment. Rarely are failures like this. Typically a failure is just a, like, a, like a little twitch. All right, I can't do that with, I need a little bit more money or I need a little bit more time or I, I can't try to start a business at the same time I'm going partying every night. 
right? It makes it a little hard to focus, right? I, I, cannot, I cannot be half sleeping and be in a business. Maybe I want to, if I'm going to start another business with the guys, the two of us need to spend more time focusing on the business and less time going party. I, 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 there's all kinds of factors that affect your ability to be successful in business. And most of it has to do with just starting, right? So I go back, I, I take you down this path of why it's changing, right? The industry, you know, brands like Chipotle can look at the site and look at it way, way differently. Now, the amount of data that we collect in that data collection, site analysis, how it's going to run, all the, all the population density, when, when, when Tyler goes to school, when he goes, comes home, when he goes out to dinner, when he likes to go, all that technology now can go into how I design the building. Now, I can tell you in the very near future, buildings will be designed by AI. If any of you guys have not read the book, Life, uh, uh, Life 3.0, Please, right now, write that down and let us listen to it. It's an audio book. The guy's voice is a little bit dry. But what it tells you, what it talks about is, is, is it's where technology is going. The ability for AI to develop every aspect of what we're doing is changing, right? So if imagine architects going away, right? That now building technologies will start, it'll start slowly, right? First, it's going to start off with like little assistants. Right, assistants that work with us, right? Right, uh, you know, uh, uh, Tyler, you might have an assistant that says, you know, uh, hey, I'd like to go for a burrito, or I'd like to go for dinner. And your assistant will automatically know that you like burritos and that you're on your way to school and there's a burrito shop and you'll end up going right by there. And by, by the way, your favorite burrito will be ready for you the second you walk in and the table you want will be ready to go for you. And it'll be intuitive, right? It'll be this place where uh, you know, AI is not going to be this big giant machine that takes over our lives and we become slaves to it. It'll work, work with us. You know, very much like my Tesla does, right? I, I got a Tesla and I got, I, got, I got in the car and I drive down the street at first. It was like, oh my God, look at this. I'm taking a nap while I'm driving, right? And, and I could do that down the highway. And then it, then it learned a little bit more. I learned how to go off off ramps. And next time I got it, every time I get an update from Tesla, I'm like, all right, God, I can't run, 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 run down and check out what's on my update, right? So now it learns how to go off the off ramp. Right? And then it learns how to read the arrows on the floor. And then it learns to read uh, red lights, right? And, and Elon Musk promised me somewhere, my Tesla, while I'm sitting here at work, will be able to go and do robo-taxi and pick people up and make me 60,000 bucks a year while I sit at the office. My car will be out there making me money. Imagine that. An Uber will go down to two cents a mile, right? You'll be a robo-taxi for two cents a mile, and that car will be able to drive a million miles without me doing it. Now, look, those are all where the world's going. Right? You guys get the benefit of not having to carry the load of that and being in the middle of a period of time in the world where creations happen faster than ever before. Right? If you want to do something, the tool, you know, two kids in a, in a laptop, I mean, two, two young people in a laptop can start a, a, a website tomorrow. Uh, you know, uh, Scott and I were talking about, uh, Scott, what is the, uh, the brand that's doing the bulldozers, uh, Uber bulldozers? Yeah, it's uh, called Equipment Share here in Columbia, yeah. Yeah, pretty amazing, right? Equipment share. I, I was with a group the other day. They were talking about uh, uh, site work, right? When anytime we're doing construction site work, you guys know what I mean by site work, right? When we're moving dirt, you guys on a construction site, moving dirt on a job site, uh, lowering or, or hiring. Most of the time what that means is I'm taking some dirt off the site or I'm bringing more dirt to the site, right? One or the other. And someone figured out, hey, what if I figure out if I take that dirt from the site instead of taking it to landfill, why don't we take it to another site that needs the dirt? So now they've got these agreements that say, all right, I got this app that says, I need dirt. You, you need to get rid of dirt. Let's make it this together. Who's going to carry it over there? And, and figure out the cost of making that happen and making that happen faster and more streamlined. You can see that the future of construction, right, as AI develops buildings, the parts and pieces that it designs into it, it'll be able to order them. I'll be able to get predictive indexes that say exactly what a building is going to cost, where those materials are speak to those suppliers so that they know when I'm going to need drywall, when I'm going to need metal studs, when I need brick, and deliver those things as my teams are able to build it. Imagine Tyler and I, we've got, we've got a drywall company, right? We hired, we hired all you guys to be on our drywall company. And Noah, you're on the drywall team and you're coming to do it. And Audrey, you're on the drywall team. And all of a sudden, you two are sick. I got 10 people on the team and you two show up sick. Now maybe now AI adjust my order for the day, and it sends me 20% less drywall for the day, right? And that way I can figure out I don't have to have extra drywall on the job site. And what happens to extra material on the job site? 
it gets damaged, it gets in the way, it gets it get, it walks off the job site, right? And today <laughs> AI can dramatically change how that happens. Now the question I ask you guys is, where do you find a problem and you guys create the solution? Are you now the Uber of drywall? Are you now are you guys now the the ability to look at uh, job site lighting or job site materials or job site setup, right? Or people that uh, are looking at a job site and create a platform for where things go, how they go. There's so many different aspects of what you can create today. It's just a matter of if you guys will stay. I, I, tell, I tell people all the time, half the battle is just staying conscious, right? The world wants to give us everything to check us all out, right? If you just look at all the things that are, you know, back in the 50s, doctors smoked. You guys, you guys ever watch that? You guys ever seen the ads where doctor smoked? Come on. Actually, actually you ever see a doctor smoke in an old ad or something? You hear doctor smoked in the 50s. You imagine that? You imagine going to your doctor, he's like, hey, I'm going to take care of you. You know, you're like, dude, are you serious today? Uh, doctors, doctors recommend camel. Yep. Right. Can you imagine here? Can you imagine that a doctor recommended camel, Audrey, at one point? Uh, 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 Ali, you imagine that? You're like sitting your doctor, like, you know, I, uh, your kid looks good. <laughs> right. Can you imagine that? Well, today, People are drinking and drugs and all that's there and, and it feels like that's what we're supposed to do because we're all having fun. But the truth is most of us are checked out and scared of the world. As we start to get conscious and tap into our creative part of us, the most amazing part about humans that's different than AI is that we're creators. That in us has the ability to create. And when I'm, when I'm, when I'm, all of you have felt it, look, every single one of you have felt the creative part of you. And you know that in you is something special. That when we tap into that, it's magical. Right? When I tap into you and me, and you know, I, for a lot of years I carried a big, big I call it my big bread bag of crap around, right? All my, all the fears and anxieties and all stuff. And as I, as I grew up, I started to look at them and go, yeah, that one's not serving me anymore. Let's get rid of that one. And yeah, that's probably not there. And I took a little bit of work, right? I got to do some work. And I started working on my health and my life and the things around me. I started to get a little clear headed. And I started realizing I want to do something on this planet, I want to have some fun. And the more I challenge myself to have fun and, and push through, you know, there's great, you know, today you've got YouTube. So all the great thinkers of the world come to you, right? You can look at the Tony Robbins and the, and the, and the Bayous and the, and the Max Tedrums and the AI thinkers and, the, and, and all of the great thinkers. And you, you, if you want to see them, they're on YouTube, right? Somewhere. And I get to watch every morning. I get up. I get to watch some great thinker every day. And I spend every morning. First thing I do when I get out of bed, I get on my knees and say thank you to my higher power. And the second thing I do is I get on there and I look at some great thinker, right? Instead of filling my mind, I used to watch, I used to listen to, uh, what's the guy in New York that talks about breasts all the time? Uh, Howard Stern. I used to listen to Howard Stern. It's like junk food for the brain, right? It was useless, right? He was, but it was great, it was funny, but the truth was I wasn't filling my brain with you, bad stuff in, bad stuff out, right? I realized today, like, all right, great, I was serving myself at the time, but I really wasn't getting much done. All of a sudden, I start filling my brain with some good stuff, and some good stuff starts to happen. So just check out what you're filling the brain with, right? As, and then next, I start working on tuning myself into the day, right? I hit the gym, right? Getting myself tuned up health-wise. I need the energy, right? If you're going to be a creator, you need energy. It's very difficult to create on no energy. So if you're feeling like your energy level is low, check out what you're doing physically, right? So that's the next part of it, right? Great creators take care of the vessel that creates, right? So go, go look at that, go, all right, where, where can I look at, what am I doing in the gym? Am I taking care of my health? Am I doing, am I eating the right stuff? What am I putting in the body so that great ideas come out of the body? And you know, then, they, you know, so then I started looking at the business. As I, uh, uh, you know, I've owned 20, CDO Group now for 24 years. Last February was 24 years. And we have gone through all kinds of iterations, right? From, you know, 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, Right, I make, I get up to five million. I went back. I went to seven million. I went back. Right, you know, in 2018, we broke 85 million dollars. Right, here, going from three million dollars to 85 million dollars isn't a little bit better every year. You can't grow that way, guys. I promise you, if you think that a little bit better every day will get you there, you'll never get there. It's, it's all about figuring out what you're doing and changing your system. Right, I had to change the way I thought about what I did every day. And it was dramatic, right? So part of that for me was I had to go in and change my lifestyle. And just changing that dramatically changed the way I, I interacted with other human beings, the people that I hired. Today, this company is a woman. My wife actually runs the company. She's the president of the company. 
I'm the founder. They put me back as founder. I get to do creative things like this, speak to schools. I get to do things I really love doing. I get to do, uh, Scott and I had this amazing, you, you got you to listen to the podcast with Scott and I. It is so much fun. Uh, we we you know, just got to have some great, great stuff. I get to do uh, real creative things like the, the trip around the world. Uh, we just got back from uh, uh, skiing. I'm, I'm getting ready to go to uh, South Africa or West Africa to go uh, check out uh, with, with a really good friend of mine who's going to take me through all the slave trade and, and really be able to see it from their point of view, not from what it, you know, our, our, our textbooks do, but I'm going to go to this grand adventure. As you start to look at and create wealth and stuff in your life, your opportunities keep trying on how I can keep growing other creative ideas, right? And, you know, I always tell people, you expand and then you got to organize. Now, you know that you're expanding, you're getting creative, you know you're growing as a kid, as a human when your life feels a little hectic. That's a great sign. <clears throat> if you're feeling a little hectic, that's a pretty good thing. Why? Because you're growing. Now what you need to do is organize. Right? The next thing. So if you write that down, expand, organize. But right between the two of them is a little bit of chaos. So if you're in the chaos, that's a pretty good sign that you're growing. Right? So I would tell you, that's, that's always been my mantra. Is, and I, not always. That's, that not always wasn't my mantra. That became my mantra, and I started realizing, all right, being a little chaotic was great, because I was a lot like a thermostat. I don't know about you guys, but, you know, I like my thermostat at the house somewhere between 70, you know, 68 and 71. Right? If it gets above that, it's a little too hot. Right? It gets to 72, 73, it's a little warm. I, you know, it, someone in my office likes it like 75. I'm like, stop. I'm, I'm, look, I'm too energetic to be that hot. I, you know, we're, I'm, I'm Sicilian. We, we, we get a little sweaty. We're funny. All right. Uh, you know, it gets to 73. It gets a little hot. If it gets down to 68, it gets a little cold. Well, life's like that, right? I start doing good, right? I start hitting the upper limit. I start to sabotage myself, right? I start to act crazy. Oh, my God, things are too busy. It's too hectic. And I slow myself down, and then I get bored, right? And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm not doing enough. And then I ramp it up. Right, so there's this like limiting, self-limiting behavior. Start to notice that about yourself, right? As you start to look at where I am in the, in the business world, right? As I start to look at what you, you guys are at this part where you're going to be creating a lot, right? You have this chance now in, in school as you go through what you're going through, right? Those, you know, get to the end of a semester, oh my God, it's, it's hectic. But organize, organize yourself so that you get through those hectic periods, right? And then expand. Right? Once you get that organized, it all of a sudden becomes easy. You're like, ah, eh, this is nothing. Right? Now you get to another, the next stage, and you're like, all right, and you push a little bit, and it gets a little hectic. You know, all right, organize. Right? You get a couple of friends, you want to start a business together? Great. You know, you try this, and it's hard to have the But push through it. The, unco- the problem we have is everybody wants to, be not want, no, no wants to be uncomfortable anymore. And the truth is, in order to be an entrepreneur or to be creative, you're going to be in an uncomfortable spot. Stop after. Stop asking the world to be comfortable. Find the way to be enjoy being uncomfortable. Seek discomfort, right? There's a great uh, group. Have you guys watched? Uh, uh, what is it? The Yes Guys. Um, hold on. They get they have shirts that say "Seek Discomfort" on it. They're on YouTube. One right of my favorite YouTube. I've watched them before. Yeah, for the. I think I started watching them like three or four years ago when they travel around and. Yeah, yeah right, right, right. Right? They're freaking awesome. They're these young guys, and they're like, they travel the world, and they like, they seek discomfort. I'm like, I need those T-shirts, right? How do you seek that discomfort in a spot where you push yourself a little bit in that uncomfortable spot? Everybody wants to be like, 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 you know, lay back on the couch, and be, but the truth is, you get there, and then you feel really grumpy about not doing anything. So, be in that discomfort spot is a pretty good spot to be in. Now, I, I go back and tell you, there's the curve, right? As we look at what's happening in the world of development today, that creation's happening faster and faster. Where when you get the opportunity, you know, like Jonathan was showing you, there's a million spots. You know, Jonathan works on our social media platform. He communicates to people. You know, we've learned that calling people up is one way we call people. You know, hey, we'd like to do your work for you. But we've also realized that we need people out there creating stories and talking about us and, hey, we're women-owned and why women-owned is important. And creating the image of the brand is as important as being the brand, right? What the public persona is out there. That's Sophia and what she's up to. And look, I've got three daughters. 
My one is that my daughters walk in the construction world and there isn't that twinge, oh, she's a girl. I don't want that. I want my daughters to walk in a, a job site and people go, oh, I know about her. She's a badass, right? I've heard about her. The project she runs, we all make money. We get out of here quicker. Why? Because she thinks about it differently, right? She's a great project manager or a great, you know, she runs these well. Well, I think that's the tools and, and, and possibilities we have today is that if you're a man or a woman, if you're white or you're black, if you're gay, or you're straight, all that stuff slowly peeling away, right? Some of that we've had to force out of that. You know, we as a company have really had to work hard on, on intentionally hiring women and making sure that we're diverse, making sure, and some of that was uncomfortable at first, but I said, let's stand in the discomfort. Here, as my role changed, I went from being the president of the company, all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm not the president. My ego got, all of a sudden, Sophia jumped in. She, she ran the company. And as I let go of it, the company runs way better than it ever did before. She's intuitive and her system, she's systematic. I'm more of a high five kind of coach kind of guy. You guys get them kind of like a coach. Go get them, guys. Right? I'm, I'm more of that coach kind of guy. And she's more system oriented. She, she thinks more about processes, right? Checklists. Make sure everybody in the group has a system. The way that she approaches it is great. So today, there's a yin and yang to the way that we've developed the brand. Well, I say the same thing with you guys. As you find friends and people that you want to work with, right, get inspired by that, right? In the construction world, remember, it's a lagging technology. It's a lagging industry. It's fallen behind. Why? Because people put up with it. Remember, right, for most of construction's history, right, we only have to deal with that, that part right there, right? But today, that part right there makes all the differences in the world. You know, we're, we're working with a, with a sneaker brand right now, and they're identifying where their sneaker customers are. It's springtime coming up. What's important for them guys is making sure they get the new shoes on those runners. So they've gone out to the database and figure out where those people are at, looking at their online orders, looking at where these places are at. They've got their new shoes. Instead of going out and building 500, 600, $800,000 uh, new stores, they're doing pop-ups. Right, they go on to put a fifty thousand dollar pop up. Boom, they're out there. They get the new brand out there. They market to it. Right, they get to the runner. Right, that's the primary. But at the same time, they're hitting the, the kids. They're hitting the non-runner in the family. They get, they're bringing all the different aspects. And they're and guys like Jonathan are attacking that group of people to make sure that they all go through that pop up store because later on they don't need to come to the store anymore. Where are they going to buy? Online, right? That, that now it's online. So how are you guys becoming innovative and in showing people what the products are and helping them get the technologies to get those products there, right? What, what's, you, what's, what's the thing that you love the most, right? What's the part that you guys want to, want to bring to the market? What is it that you are excited about that you and your friends have been talking about that you start tonight, that you walk out of this meeting right now going, that's it. That bald guy is crazy. I'm going to start a business. Go for it. I promise you. I, I really mean that. I, really, I hope that Scott and I inspire you guys to step into what's the most creative part about you. That in you and each and every one of you guys is a creative monster. When you unleash that and, and, and wield it, it's a sword that once you pull it out, if you learn to wield it well, it will serve you well. So uh, this industry of construction has got a long way to go. Um, Hold on, I got, uh, you know, I, I know we, we've gone, uh, uh, I know that we've gone uh, around the world here. How about if I open up and talk to you guys and get some of your feedback? I'd like to get some of your feedback a little bit. Let's talk about where, uh, if, if I've inspired you to, 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 for thought, give me some ideas. Uh, if you've got a question, let's talk about it. I'm gonna, I mean, I'll I'm, go first. I mean, first I'd like to just say, you're probably the best guest speaker I've, I've had in my college uh, four years. I'm a senior now, so very inspiring for sure. Uh, you're very passionate. Makes me want to just stop school right now, three months short, and no, come no, work no, for no. you. No, 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 no. <laughs> successful in that point, I know. But um, the question I have for you is I, I'm a finance major, so um, what, what would you say in terms of your business? Because you say you have a consulting side of your business as well as the construction side. What made you want to divert the two and have those separated businesses? Was it more of seeing profit down the line or was it something that you were passionate about on the side or what, what kind of went into that process? 
No, no, got it. It happened because of McDonald's. Uh, we were doing uh, thousands and thousands of projects for McDonald's on the CM side, right? And uh, the construction management side, we were managing projects for them. And they said, hey, we're having a hard time getting, uh, you guys can get the insurance requirements, uh, your minority company. Uh, we have a lot of minority companies that can't enter into our system because they can't meet our criteria. They couldn't get, you know, $5 million worth of insurance. They couldn't get, but, you know, McDonald's has a pretty big threshold for requirements. And they needed people to coach some of those minority companies to come on board. So one of our one of the great things, so we became what's called a master GC for them, right? And so they hired us to hire all the other GCs. And then what we would do is we're that liaison between that GC and getting on board. So we'll we'll hire them to manage projects. We'll we'll uh, co we'll contract with them directly, and then McDonald's will contract with us, and then we protect McDonald's. And make sure and support them as they learn how to do the systems in McDonald's, right? We support them in learning how to do pay applications. We we support them in understanding how schedules need to go. We support them and teach them how to interact with the store managers. We support them and understand what you can and can't do. So a lot of the training that a minority company, you know, that that barrier of threshold, that threshold of entry. It's, in, it's, it's in, you know, look, you imagine you're a small company, you're a small drywall company, you're a small general contracting company, you're working your butt off all day, right? You're, you're, there's not, you know, any of you guys who start a business, you'll know that you're going to be working your butt off. Nobody successful, nobody successful, nobody successful made it without busting your ass. If, you, if there's one thing I'll tell you, that busting your ass is the key to success. So look, if it's your finance company, You've got to work like the bejesus to get it to work out. Whatever you want to do in the financial world, you are going to have to work relentlessly, right? It's, uh, it's all about being relentless. I get up every single day. I have one focus. It's growing this brand, right? Every single day, I grow this brand. Now, I get to do some other fun stuff in between here now, but that's I'm relentless about the behavior. And, I just, and when I'm here, I'm here. I have very few distractions when I'm here. I'll give you a great example. I live and work. So this is an old factory. My house is a, 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 the wall next door. 50 people a day come to my house to work. So my commute, I gave up the two hours of commute I used to do, right? And that was, that was a revolutionary part for me, just, just changing that out. So find those things that, where you can get relentless focus in it. And uh, I, I think there's something there. Cool. Oh, yeah. Thank you. What do, you, what do you think about doing, Tyler? Yeah, um, I'm not too sure. I, I interned with Boeing over the summer, and I was doing government contracting, which was really interesting. Um, but I always, I've had a passion for investments, so I'm kind of just looking for uh, anything that will get me a foot in the door, honestly, just experience, any kind of finance experience at this point, just early on in my career. But down the line, I'd, I'd hope to, uh, I mean, I'd love to own my own hedge fund or run my own hedge fund. That'd be great, you know, but... Uh, I think any kind of experience from finance, you can do whatever you want with finance. So I think just getting any kind of experience is great. So, I, I, Listen, some of the wealthiest people I know are hedge fund owners and, you know, the, the guys with the best analytical minds that get in there. And it, again, I think it's just about being relentless about understanding the systems and technologies and the processes. And most of them have really created uh, algorithms that are just so intuitive to the market. Uh, they've, you know, and I can see that being the future, that your algorithm is really the difference between uh, the success and not success of it. And by the way, if you get into that and you decide something, you know, I've never imagined I would be in construction. I thought I, for sure thought I was gonna be Gordon Gecko, but all of a sudden life goes that way. You're, you know, uh, connecting the dots going forward. I, I always hated people who knew what they wanted to do. Like I was always mad about that. I'm like, like, like I always, I'm like, how do you know? I, I have no idea what I'll do tomorrow, right? And uh, you know, knowing what I wanted to do was not something I did. But I started to figure out what I didn't want to do more importantly, right? I'd get a job, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do that anymore. And I got another one, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do that anymore. And then I found a couple of things I'd like to do, and I'm like, yeah, I'll do more of that, right? So it's more, I think, you know, as you go through it, don't be ashamed, don't be mad if you change your mind or you go through a process and you're like, oh, that was cool, but let's try something else on today. Uh, yeah, here, and by the way, where you're at, get a new job every six months, who cares, here, every three months, go for something new. I, I would, I, I remember when I was a kid, I, worked, I lived in Florida, right? I grew up in Florida. And uh, like, I remember I went to work for a, this pool company, right? I was cleaning pools, right? And, and I'm like, I remember I had the pressure, I, that's where I started the pressure cleaning idea. 
And I said to the guy who owned the company, I'm like, I had a little route. I'm like, hey, what if I asked the customers if I could pressure clean their side, their, their patio decks? There's a lot of mold and stuff on there and make a few more bucks, right? And I went around and, you know, I got whatever, it was 500 bucks a piece for him. And the guy's like, dude, you just doubled my business. I'm like, yeah. yeah by the way, here's my, I'm, I'm, I'm going to quit. I heard that, that's, I love you. You're a really nice guy, but that's not what I want to do. And he's like, he couldn't even be mad at me. He's like, you're leaving, but you doubled my business. And I'm like, I'm not going to like walk out on you, but here, please find somebody else a couple weeks from an hour, three weeks from an hour. I, look, I want to go do something else. And I was okay. I was like, look, I left on good terms. I helped him build his business, but it was something I didn't want to do. Great, don't screw people over, but you know, if that's how exciting, you be okay with what? Going somewhere else. Don't don't get stuck there. Go, you know, like, great, I love you, but I want to go try something else. Don't be ashamed of that. What else you got? Come on. Anthony, I got one question that a student had yeah. submitted in advance I wanted to ask you. Um, now, I know you don't have much of a personality, but uh, <laughs> uh, some of the students were wondering um, in your LinkedIn, uh, they looked at that and they found that a lot of people recommended you and they said that you are always pushing your team to pre perform and to be better. And a student was asking me, how do you kind of motivate team members um, for without, for lack of a better expression, stepping on toes? You know, it is a science, right? It's maybe I should ask Jonathan this. <laughs> you know, for me, for me it's a, a lot of it is, is being real, right? If you ask anybody here, I'm a recovering alcoholic, right? I'm a guy who drank too much, and I'm, I'm kind of straight with people, right? Like, hey, look, this is what didn't work. I try to be like, I, first of all. I'm no better than anybody else. I, my whole goal is to know that, hey, we walk shoulder to shoulder on this planet together. And as we walk on this planet and one of my brothers is hurting, how do I reach over and help him out, right? I think if you stop, you know, the problem with success sometimes is right next to doing something good, you know what the next thing that pops up? is my ego, right? You gotta be careful of that thing. That thing's dangerous. And you gotta watch out how it pops up. And you gotta start looking at, why am I doing these things? Am I doing it to be self-serving? Right? Or am I going to do it to help others? And keeping that in check has been, a, been, been something that I think it's a, it takes a day-to-day, -day, hour by hour uh, check of yourself, right? To really look at why are you doing things, right? What, what, what are you up to? What's your motivation behind what you're doing? And I think that if you stay there and you're real with folks, and if you do the work, great leaders are relentless for the work they do. There is, you cannot be a great leader, number one, if you don't know how to be a great server. Right? If you can't serve others, you'll never be a great leader. So one, learn to serve somebody else. Go get jobs where you do way more than you ever expected. Like that pool company, that guy never expected me to go pressure clean decks and move that. But I did. Right? I went above and beyond. It's a behavior that you create in yourself. Right? So practice being abundantly serving somebody. Right? And, and once you realize something, you know, we have an org chart here. Right? And the truth is, you know, some people take it's like a pyramid, right? The truth is you've got to turn it upside down and look at it and go, look, your job is to serve all of them. If you start with your leadership there, if you're the leader of a group or if you guys are a, 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 a team, if you're the team leader, learn to serve the people on your group, right? As soon as your ego pops up and goes, they're supposed to, that's probably something you can do, right? They're supposed to, how come she didn't? Right? Have grace for the people on your team and realize that, hey, look, there's lots of things that stop people in life. Like, literally, there's millions of things. It can be, life itself is complicated. Right? All of us go through struggles. I think if you can have grace for your team members, right? have grace for each one of us. You have grace for the guy across having a hard day. Right? And, uh, I, and look, I can tell you, Jonathan will tell you, I'm not always perfect. There are days where I walk in going, what? And I got to walk and go, yeah, I'm sorry. I was just having, I, fear kicked in, right? I got, I got afraid of something. I think that's, I think that's great advice. And I think that uh, I've only gotten to know you for about two hours and I can tell that you're what I call WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get. And so being that, um, you know, you kind of know that uh, here's a person I could tell something to. And if he tells me he's not going to, he's going to keep it in confidence or, or uh, you know, something I need to, you know, hash out with him. Um, you know, he's not going to hold it against me. And, and so having that, uh, establishing that trust, even if you have very different personalities, I have a friend of mine that we've worked on a lot of projects. We're very different personalities, um, but we trust each other. 
right? So we, we know that we can trust each other. And I think that's, um, I would just say that's part of it. So yeah, students, other questions for uh, Anthony while we got him on here? Yeah, I have one. Uh, so, I mean, one concern when you're looking at a business venture is uh, like existing competitors. So how do you, I guess, get over that fear or worry and jump into a market that already has someone with a lot of market share? You know, that there is a, uh, there's always, here's what I'll tell you. Find something you love doing and don't look at them, right? You know, uh, there's always this part. If you want to get scared, there is plenty of things to talk you out of it. If you keep looking, you'll find something that will talk you out of doing anything. And, I'm, and I promise you that if you, if you keep looking for the question, What's the competitor? What's the uh, cost of entry? What's the look, Ben, I promise you, I have I've tried to scare myself out of many things. And then I stepped through it. And on the other side, I'm like, ah, yeah. you know, the first podcast, Jonathan will tell you the first podcast I did. I was like, oh, my God, first I get all my friends. I, I podcasted all my friends. And then I, I started going, all right, now I'm going to start talking to people that aren't my friends. And right? that first one, I was like, oh, my God, the guy's name is Siva, Siva Bayou, right? He's the uh, CIO for uh, YMCA. He's a guy, he's an amazing guy, right? He's my first non-friend uh, podcast. And I remember I got on, I'm like, uh, I don't, you know, all of a sudden, you, I was mumbling. I'm like, oh, all right, look, I'm really nervous about this. You're my first non-friend doing it. And I just told him myself, I said, look, Steve, I'm just gonna tell you, I'm scared, I'm nervous. You're my first non-friend podcast. And I'm grateful that you're doing this for me and uh, that you're doing it with me. And he had so much grace for me. And, it, and the podcast went great. He and I started talking. Look, he's a guy who never ran. And then two years ago started running and now he's run 700 plus mile races. And you start to get into that with them and all of a sudden the conversation went great. I'm like, there was just two guys talking and I realized I made a big deal out of nothing. And most of the time, whatever that fear is that's, that's stopping you, I promise you, Ben, I promise you, it's some thought of it. If you stay in the moment, in the conversation, in what you're doing today, just what you do tonight, what you're doing right now, you can't get scared, right? If I just stayed in the conversation with you guys right now, not think about the judgment. Oh my God, what the students going to think? I'm like, look, if I just stay in, hey, I really love that. I, I, I love being with you guys. Look, my, I, I want, I want, there was a guy that came in my, in my class that changed my life, right? Uh, I, there was a, we, we did that um, uh, uh, DECA. Do you guys have DECA in your school? Just giving every education of DECA? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. some of them do, yeah. Right, and, I, and he made me the president of DECA, right? It's like, man, I really like that. And you know, I was I had those little businesses, right? And uh, he he's like, you're gonna be the deck, you're gonna be president of our deck of class, and they, and uh, we raised more money for our, our class uh, back then. We sold, uh, we, we were the bobcats, right? And uh, we sold like little tiny stuffed animals with bobcats and our school name on it, and everybody bought them. And I was a captain wrestling team, and like we made a big deal out of it, and, and like all of a sudden I'm like, oh look at that, my first real venture and and great entrepreneurial skills, right? Uh, so someone will come in, hopefully light your fire, and then look, I, I, before I'm done, I'm, I'll put in the chat, here, uh, Jonathan, you might put in the chat my, uh, here, my, uh, my email address, my phone number. If you guys ever want to call me, anytime. Here, I really mean that. Like, I, I want you to get, I love doing this. I love this business. I hope that you guys will find those spots when you get stopped. There's some bald guy in Chicago that'd be happy to talk to you. Look, I, I, I mean that. Like, as you go through your journey, and hopefully somewhere you'll find someone that you can reach back and you can pull them up, right? Will each one help one, right? And if we do that enough, what are you working on? Carl, what's your favorite thing out there? What are you working on, Ben? Uh, yeah, so it's a application for athletic recruiting. I started it about two years ago and I was in contact with the university football team uh, and I ended up they then COVID hit, so they paused finances. So I was looking to getting back in and starting that back up. So an app for uh, recruiting uh, ath athletes? Correct. Yeah, here, listen, anything that gets rid of brokers, anything that gets rid of that middleman layer, great business. Look, that is the number, the problem with the past was you couldn't find people. But today with technology, you're, here, you're heading down the right path platform, right? How do you get those those players onto a platform, really celebrate who they are, get all their highlight reels right in one spot? So you, now you're, you're, a, you're a college team in, in uh, uh, Podunk, you know, Wisconsin, 
you're looking for a quarterback, people that are open to be, you know, open to go there, boom, let's go look at higher light, light reels. Now you bring the, it's in the, you having to set out recruiters to go find them. Let me give you a great example. Uh, with, we just did a 6,000 store remodel team for McDonald's, right? You guys got that? You guys, have you guys been to a new experience in the future for McDonald's? Have any of you guys been to the new look? Have you seen the new one with the kiosks? Have you seen it? Have you done a kiosk at McDonald's yet? Oh, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, so we, those, yeah, yeah, where you, cool. you, know, you do the kiosk and then so it comes out on like a conveyor belt. Right, right, right. So, so here, look, McDonald's in the future will be dramatically different. Where, where, where McDonald's is heading, it's going to blow you away. And you're like, it's McDonald's. They're now working on farm to table food. They're working on, uh, you're never going to see the kitchen anymore. You, you, by the way, you're going to walk up to McDonald's and your food will come to your table for you. You'll know what you want on your app. It'll come to you. We've installed these new things in there that are, that are table finder locators and all kinds of cool things that, that's coming, right? It's just a matter of you got to slowly, the, the, the adoption and transition takes a little bit of time. You'll close the kitchen up, right, where you won't see all that noise back there. They'll become, if you go look at the new McDonald's here in Chicago, it's beautiful. I mean, I'm telling you, it's like a museum, beautiful. And you're like, that's a McDonald's? But here, so that remodel program, let me give you a great example. All right, right, I want to talk about now things are coming to the people rather than you going to it. So back then, we used to have to re do a remodel program, right? So I would be a construction guy. I, I, I'd go out and uh, they'd say, hey, I want to go put a remodel in uh, upstate, New, uh, upstate New York or upstate New York, Wisconsin. Great. So I'd go, I'd go up there and I'd go look at the site. And they'd go, well, we want to do this, this, and this. And great. I'd go look at that and I'd go with this, this, and this. And then operations would have to meet me up there and we'd have to go there together. So it'd be my group and their group and we'd meet up there and we'd put together a budget and a format. And great, now we get an architect, like, hey, architect, we want to do this, we need a permit. So then the architectural group would go up there and they'd go look and they'd put together a set of drawings and that'd be great. And now we said, oh, now we need contractors to build it. Now the contractor would go up there and they'd go look at the place and they'd go take a look at it. And they'd go, great, we're gonna bid on it. Now their subs would all have to go up there and they'd have to go bid it, right? Now, how many different groups of people is that? Is that six people, six groups? Six different groups of people would have to go to upstate Wisconsin to go look at a remodel out there. We changed that. We have these 3D cameras we have over there called Matterport cameras. Look them up, they're amazing. Right, it's called Matterport. They're about six thousand bucks a piece. By the way, they're coming. The prices are coming down. The, now, the now the technology is on your iPhone. You can do three D imaging and fly throughs on your iPhone. Right, that's what I'm talking about. The point of entry is changing. That six thousand dollar camera is now your twelve, because now it's got lidar on it. The new iPhone twelve's got lidar. It can do the same thing that that camera can do. That cost me six thousand dollars to buy them. Right, so point of entry for business coming down. Right now, we went and camered all those job sites. And all those job sites came to the people, right? Dramatically changed the speed by which we did. We did 6,000 remodels, 6,000 remodels in one year, right? Multiple companies, it took hundreds of companies to, to do it, but all the projects, we went out and scoped them all, all three fly through cameras, right? So that we could see the job site inside and outside. And the job site came to all the people rather than people coming to the job sites. Not only that, speed, impact on the environment. You know, think about how many car rides, how much paper, how much crap people would have had to waste to go to that, those job sites, right? The impact on our, our world. So today, not only are we making it faster, but we're also impacting our ability to do that. So as you look at those opportunities, Ben, right? Spots where, um, you know, there's a broker, a real estate broker, a, 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 any of the broker type stuff, they're in the, they're in the way. Right, uh, they, in the past you needed them because they're the only people who knew where the stuff was. But today, that te with technology, they can find that that information uh, and bring it to the people way better than it was before. So, uh, that's another one. Uh, who's got another question, or an idea, or a thought, or just want to yell at me? You know, on the. Uh on the fear side that we touched on earlier in the being uncomfortable part, Anthony, I, I wanted to speak to that a little bit. In that, so I've been with CDO a little bit over two years now, and I don't think there's really been a time where Anthony pushed me to do something that I've never done before or that I was uncomfortable in. There wasn't, there hasn't been a time yet where after the fact I said, oh, wish I didn't do that. No. For one way or another, after the fact, I've always said, wow, like, I'm really glad that I stretched myself on that. So I just wanted to be a little bit of a, a personal testament, whether it was a, a new way to try an email campaign, right? Or a new way to advertise to our target markets through social media with the uh, types of content that they find important. 
right? Things I haven't done before, getting that encouragement from other people who really believe in you, I think is absolutely essential. So don't be afraid of that uncomfortable feeling. I think you should uh, always lean into it if you can. Um, I guess if I had a question, it would be about like how you went about getting that first client um, when you didn't have anything to show them of your work beforehand. Like, how did you convince them to go with CDO? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no here. So um, I started CDO Group. I, I had been in house with a bunch of brands, right? So my first job, you remember, I had that little painting company. I, 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 well, I went from pressure cleaning. I am starting a little painting company, right? The one I was painting houses with, and I got a, uh, I, I worked for a general contractor building a banana. I did a Banana Republic. You guys know Banana Republic, right? Back then, Banana Republics had like 30 shades of white. Right? It was all white. They had like off-white, antique white, but it was all white, right? And the guy nailed me. Look, I want to tell you the truth. I got I got bamboozled a little bit, right? But it was my first commercial job. I went from painting houses, right? Me and my friends, my college kids, were painting houses. Look, I had no contracts. I had no insurance. I had nothing. It was all off the... Look, I'm talking bootstrapping it. Go for it. When I tell you bootstrap, go, look, so what? Don't be afraid. So so I didn't have insurance. I didn't have... I just... Be, I was careful. I worked hard at it. I'm telling you, you're never going to have... If you're waiting for it to be perfect, you'll never get anything. If you're waiting for it to be the perfect setup, go for it half-ass. Just go for it. I promise. Walk in and say, I have no experience, but I have all the energy in the world, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crush this for you. Look, if you can get kind of one thing, I'm going to work my behind off and give you more than the person next to you. That's why I want you to hire me, because I believe I'm great at this business, and let me sh give, give me a chance to show you. Now, that contractor hired me, and uh, he gave me a Banana Republic, and I know, he, he paid me 5000 bucks. It was probably worth 10000 bucks. Right? But I didn't care because I got my first job. And then he took me to a discovery zone. Do you guys, I don't even know if you guys know what discovery zones are because they were like these play, you know, you know, like those playgrounds from McDonald's? You know, the, the playgrounds from McDonald's? They were, they, have you ever been to Chuck E. Cheese? Right, right, yeah. All right, so it was Chuck E. Cheese. It was the playgrounds from McDonald's inside of a Chuck E. Cheese, like these big giant play, like balls and tubes and slides, right? And uh, so I, I got that back then, like the air duct was like blue and the water lines, the, the cold line was blue and the hot line was red and all the walls were primary color. So as a painting job, it was a little complicated, but I figured out how to do it really, really well, right? One of the things I did was I took all of the duct work and all the water lines, I took them all outside and I put tarps out on the, uh, out on the street and I sprayed them all out in the street and they put them up and when they hung them, all I had to do was go up there and touch them up. And the project manager for Discovery Zone walked in and goes, dude, I was like, you know, I was like 22 years old. The guy's like, that's genius. He goes, how did you, how did you come up? Like, I don't know. I just didn't want to sit up on a ladder for a month. You know, it's hot up there. It was in Florida. It was a project in Florida. You ever been up you know, in Florida? The higher you go, the hotter it gets at a job site. The ACs weren't on yet. I'm like, I didn't want to sit up there and sweat. I was just, it was just a matter of being smart, right? And I'm like, all right. And the other guys would sit up there with a ladder and they'd sit up there and, you know, paint it. I'm like, I ain't doing that. I'm a little smarter than that. So, um, so you know, like, it was just a matter of hustling. And uh, I would tell you the same thing, hustle, right? You can't hustle from the couch, right? I promise you, no matter how much you try, the couch is rarely where you're going to find the opportunities. You got to get out there and find the, find the hustle, right? What's, what's the part of you that keeps stepping out there and trying on uh, that? So I got that. And the project manager invited me up to Chicago. He goes, look, my company's doing this cost-cutting thing. You want a free trip to Chicago? I'm like, you're paying me to go to Chicago? I was a little redneck in the floor. I'm like, yeah, yeah, dude, absolutely. He goes, I get a free trip to Chicago? Yeah. He goes, we're bringing one of every sub, a, plum, a plumber, a painter. We're trying to find a way to reduce cost. Uh, you got some, and it seems like you got a good idea, you, you know, how to paint this thing. I'm like, yeah. And I went up there, and I walked in. Now, you can imagine this. I'm a little redneck kid from Florida, right? I had never been in a big city like Chicago. I get off the train. My knees were knocking. I thought for sure I was going to pee in my pants. I, I, as I went up the elevator, I thought, I'm going to faint. I swear to God, I thought I was going to faint. I was so scared. I'm like, they're going to find out I'm a fraud. I'm like, these guys are all going to find out I made this shit up. I have no idea what I'm doing. I literally, I, and my business is, this, like, literally, it was like, you know, me and my couple, kind, you know, I had like some buddies, right? Like, these were, like, you guys. It's like, hey, come on, guys. We're going to start a painting company. And I went to, like, Office Depot, and I bought some of those, like, three-ply, uh, like, invoices, and I had some business cards made up, and that was my company. Like, there was, no, there was no substance to it yet. I just was hustling. So all I can tell you is that uh, I got up there, and the guy offered me a job. He's like, I want to hire you. I'm like, you want to hire me? 
I'm like, nah, I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm gonna be Gordon Gecko. I'm gonna, I, I wanted to be, I wanted to be a broker. I wanted to be an accountant. Uh, I thought for sure I was gonna go in the accounting world. And I went back to Florida, and someone had stole my. I had like a little trailer, like a little train with all my like painting stuff in it. And I swear to God, I thought Discovery Zone did it. And I looked up in the air. I go, dude, I, up there, whoever you are up there, you must be telling me something. I'm gonna take the job. And a month later, I walked into Discovery Zone, and I walked up to my boss. He goes, all right. Look, go over that lady over there. She's going to give you a credit card. You're going to go over that lady. She's got some airline tickets. And she handed me 30 files. It goes, come back when they're built. And my second day, I went to Puerto Rico. I, went from, I, moved, I moved from Florida. I moved a little truck, pickup truck up to Chicago. Scared to death. I'm like, oh, my God, it's cold. I, you know, my clothes didn't work. I, 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 bought, I bought jackets in Florida. They were really cool looking. But they were useless, right? Now I wear those like Michigan man jackets, right? Like, you know, big giant puffy jacket. I don't care what they look like, I just wanna be warm. But back then I wanted to be cool. So I'm up there freezing my Jesus off. But I moved up there, I stepped through the fear. They, they let me travel. I'm like, I, wait, you're gonna pay me to travel? I get to, I, my second day I was in Puerto Rico. I'm like, dude, I got paid to go to Puerto Rico. Bam! I was like, this is badass, right? And then my second day I got to go to California. I went from Puerto Rico through Chicago, back to California. That was my second day. I was in La Jolla. I went to La Jolla. And then the third day, I went to Hawaii. That was my first week. I'd gone to Puerto Rico, Hawaii, and La Jolla in a week. I was like, I, get, I did that for four years. It was awesome, right? So you never know where they're going to be. Look, all I was saying to you is go out there. That first client, that first job, that first thing you do, you don't know where it's going to happen. You, you can't. If you're waiting for to know, you're never going to know. Just keep stepping, right? Just keep stepping. Keep stepping. Right, go find another one, go find another gig. Right, go, hey, I don't, I don't like this one. Don't do that, go do another one, right? So every time you go, that's not what I wanna do, it's okay, you're young. You don't have to do anything, right? You have no bills, there's no, nothing you have to do. I just encourage you to keep trying, right? Keep trying on another one, try another spot. All right, what else you got? Go we're gonna, well, actually, we're gonna have to wrap stuff up here in a little bit, Anthony, but um, uh, I just wanna, say thank you so much for this i th i agree uh with you know everything that anthony says um i think that when you're looking at projects the way i finally learned how to do it was I think it doesn't matter if the project fails in a lot of ways it matters whether i am developing new capabilities so i'm i now can evaluate things better i now can do this so um i want to thank you so much and thank you also for sharing your um uh uh, in contact information. Uh, I know that students really appreciate that, and I'm sure that some students will be reaching out to you uh, as they're trying to um, move forward on their adventures. And I hope that you'll uh, consider coming back and talking with us again.